So the next talk is a double block hash and sum, a paradigm for constructing beyond busted bound secure PRFs by Nilanjan Data, Avijit Dutta, Mridul Nandi, and Gutam Paul, and the talk is given by uh, Mridul. Thank you for the uh, introduction. Uh, this is a joint work with Nilanjan Data, Avijit Dutta, and Gautam Paul. So uh, I will first briefly recall uh, the classical symmetric key story, which is very common to all of you, just, uh, just to recall uh, uh, the setup. So this is a symmetric case uh, setup. So we have uh, Alice and Bob who share the same key. And there might be another person who is adversary and who can intercept. And not only that he can intercept, he can also manipulate uh, the communications. So authentication uh, is our main goal here. So in that case, like Alice computes a tag from the message and also the secret key. And Bob actually recomposes the same thing, we recompose the tag and verifies uh, whether these are same or not. So that is the way uh, the authentication works. And uh, in case of uh, the forgery security, so the goal should be that uh, the if, if who is the adversary here cannot modify the message, uh, cannot modify uh, the message without forging a new and correct tag. So essentially, uh, if should not produce a new should not be able to produce a new uh, message and uh, tag pair. <coughs> so that's the uh, security game for the authentications. Uh, the, the question is now, in terms of the adversary's point of view, how the adversary can force. So before we, uh, before we define uh, the force, we should, we should model like uh, what is the power of the adversary and or definitely the goal. Goal is the forging. So let's look at the power of the adversary. So adversary can make several queries. Okay, so several queries to the Mac Oracle. That means he, uh, he can get the uh, different uh, tags for different messages in his uh, own choice, like he uh, is adaptively. And also uh, he can make the verification Oracle queries. So he can mm, generate a new, uh, a new message tag pair and ask uh, the verifying Oracle. Here is Bob is the verifying Oracle. And he can get the response whether this pair is valid or not. So that might be useful. So, so adversary has these two oracles, the encryption oracle and the verification oracle. And at the end, uh, uh, the if should produce a, a message and tag pair which should, should not have been uh, seen in the MAC queries. So that's the uh, forgery security game. And let's look at uh, uh, simple uh, uh, examples where we have a birthday bound security. So this is the ECBC mode. So where we have a CBC uh, uh, before the last call. So we have a CBC MAC until the last call. And then we apply the uh, one more block cipher with the independent keys. So this is encrypted CBC MAC. There are several variants of this. Uh, just let us focus in uh, this. So what, what uh, adversary will, uh, okay, so let's, before we adversary, let's, let's see some properties of this CBC MAC. So if you, uh, Look at the, if you have a collisions here, if the T values collide for two different masses, and because the block cipher is uh, permutations, that means it collides on the sigma values. That means, the, uh, that means it collides on the CBC MAC also. So the collision on the ECBC MAC is equivalent to collision on the CBC MAC. And that gives, a expansion, that, uh, gives an expansion property. That means, so if you now have a collision, then you now if you add any extra blocks, say C, then you still have a collision. Okay, so that's called the expansion property of uh, the ECMC MAC. So then uh, most of the sequential MAC uh, satisfies this expansion property and, and that, could be used to, uh, exp uh, that could be used to get an attack uh, once you have a collision. And okay, so let's see how the, this can be attacked. So adversary can make several MAC queries and hoping for collisions. And in the, in the, uh, the butter bound, uh, adversary will get a collisions. Uh, which the success probability of the collision will be uh, the number of tag queries, the square of the number of tag queries divided by two power n, where n is the size of the tag. So, uh, once uh, adversary got the collisions, say adversary got the collisions for m and m prime, so here might be like a MAC of i accept is same as MAC of i reject. So that means if I add any extra block after that, we, we will have a collisions because of the expansion property. 
So, uh, so Bob is, uh, say, let's see, uh, 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 an abstract communication. Like Bob is asking Ellipse, what is my, uh, what is your review? So, and so if says, okay, so you should respond to the uh, review. So Alice is now said, okay, I accept your paper, but we already have seen that the I accept is I reject. So with the same tag T, uh, for the I accept your paper, this is the message, and the same tag T will be valid tag for I reject your paper, okay? So that means if actually generates a new message, I reject your paper, paper with the valid tag T. So this is, this is a forging attack. Okay? And that requires the collisions, and that is about the bound. So essentially, uh, the number of queries is about the bound. And uh, our primary focus in this talk will be how we can achieve uh, beyond about the bound security. Okay, so let's see uh, 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 what happens in the about the bound security. Like if you fix say, epsilon is to power minus 10, it's like your forgery advantage, say. And if you take as a small block, like a 64 uh, bit block cipher or 64 bit tag, and if you take the L is 2 plus 16, L is the number of blocks of the message. So that uh, sometimes affects on the collision probability, uh, which actually uh, does for the PMAC. So uh, there are known security bounds for ECB, uh, ECBC and PMAC. So ECBC has a birth bound without the L factor. For PMAC, we have a L factor. <coughs> And if you compute this bound, uh, uh, if, you, if you plug those values in, in this bound, you get that uh, the number of queries should be at most 2 power 25 for ECBC, and PMAC, it should be 2 power 80. So that means the birth bound security, uh, if you have a birth bound security, your query limit or your data limit is very low. So it's better if you have a beyond birth bound security. <laughs> okay, so, so far we, uh, consider the forgery game of the MAC, which consider bad the bound forgery of the ECBC MAC, and we see that the bad the bound is so, it, it, it gives uh, too much limitations, so it's, it's better if you have a, something beyond bad the bound. So now we will uh, see how we can get a beyond bad the bound secure MAC. Okay, so there are some known constructions already. So for example, you look at some ECBC uh, by Jasuda in CTRSA 2010, so it's just uh, two copies of ECBC. So you have a one ECBC, you have already seen the ECBC up to here. So EK1 and EK2, so this is, this is the one ECBC map. And you have another ECBC map applied to the same message, but the two different keys, K3 and K4, and then you sum it. So that the name stands for the, uh, the design of some ECBC. This is definitely not efficient, like because the rate is half, okay? And it requires four independent block cipher keys. And security is proven like uh, QQ, LQ, or 2 power 2 n. So it's, it's now it's about beyond birth bound security because you see the, you get the QQ or 2 power 2 n if you ignore the factor L. So it's not a birth bound security. There are other constructions uh, in Kepler 2011 uh, by Jasuda, and he uh, actually uh, modifies the PMAC construction. So if you look at the top layers, so you get a PMAC, but you have a bottom layers, which is the linear combinations of the, the chaining values. And, and then you apply this EK2 and EK3. So up to this point is like a PMAC, and then we have another computations, and you get. So this is a very simple, uh, small overhead over PMAC, which actually gives a uh, beyond birth bound security. And there is another constructions 3K F9, which is uh, defined over CBC Mac. So you see that the. Uh, we have all known birth the bound construction, and on top of that, you can design your beyond birth the bound security with a little over it. So you have a uh, x. You just what you have to do. The, this is the CBC MAC values or ECBC MAC value actually, and then you XOR with uh, uh, the chaining values and apply another keys, uh, apply the block cipher with another independent keys, and then you get a final tag. So they have proved the security is QQ LQ or two power two n. But I found this, uh, we found this proof is wrong actually. So you do not get a birth the bound security in terms of the L. You, uh, sorry, beyond birth the bound security in terms of the L. So it should be L for four. Actually. So this bound is not correct. But that's a different issue. It's just uh, we, when you look at the different constructions with a similar, uh, 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 with, a, with a beyond birth the bound security, we've uh, found some flaw in the proof here. And there are other constructions, uh, like MAC plus by NITO in SCGAP 2017. And there you have a, you have a uh, light MAC on top, and then you have a, a idea, same idea applied to the PMAC plus, 
and we, uh, we got a light map plot. And here you don't have an L factor as like a, L, a light map. But we have now beyond bound the boundary. Okay, so, so far we see the known constructions which achieves the beyond but the bound constructions, but all of these constructions uh, has three keys. Okay, so, and they, are, and, and they see are the similar design principles. So that's what we now uh, see, like what are the design principles, uh, and we use that to unify all these designs, have a unified proof, and that also, not only, it does, uh, not only unifies the, all the constructions, also, but it also gives a higher security in the sense of the higher, uh, 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 bound uh, for maybe in terms of the L or sometimes in terms of Q. So let's see. So, so we have so these three kit constructions. This is the unified view of all these constructions. So we apply the hash function, some hash functions. Okay, we get two values, sigma and theta, and then we have a, uh, some process, post, post processor, we call it say some functions, uh, where, and we apply that and we, uh, uh, and we sum it, and we got the tag. So this is like a, you have a double block hash, and, and then you apply the sum functions. So if you have a, a, a so and, and here you have a three keys because we consider this as an independent key, and all these constructions actually have the independent keys, and maybe four keys for in case of the ECBC because here they have two keys. But you can make it two keys if you have a same uh, block cipher here. Okay, so that can save one more one key. So instead of three key, you can have a two keys. And even further, you can make it single keyed if you, if you use the same key here. Okay. So, so there are different variants of this type, this paradigm, like let's call it double block has then sum. And for all this construction, we can prove the security if we have a security of the, uh, if you have a PRF security of this sum functions. So if the sum functions becomes, is a PRF, then you can apply the well-known has then PRF and we can get a uh, PRF or max security. But unfortunately, the sum function is not a PRF, and it is easy to see. Let's uh, uh, make four queries uh, to the sum functions. So the first two queries, we have a, uh, the first block are same, and third, third and fourth queries, we have the first blocks are same, and first and third, we have a second blocks are same, and second and fourth, we have second blocks are same. So that means uh, each block is used exactly twice. So now if you uh, observe these uh, four outputs, and if you XOR it, because each, each block appeared exactly twice, so it cancels each other and you get zero, okay? So just by making four queries, you can distinguish the sum function. So sum function is not clearly a PRF. So if you graphically uh, represent this pre the previous attack, what we actually have is uh, like an alternating cycle. Will mean that we have uh, uh, equalities on the first block and the uh, blue dotted edge will mean the equalities on the second blocks. So what we actually have in these four queries that we have alternating cycles. So we have a red edge here, we have a red edge here, and the blue edge in, in these two, okay? So if you have uh, this type of alternating cycle, <coughs> not even for the four length, you can have a alternating cycle of length two. That means uh, both polis, which is not possible in, when we analyze the PRF, but it might be possible that the our inputs might, might collide if the hash, if, if, if the input is the output of the hash function, they may collide. And that can give two alternating cycle. And this is a four alternating cycle. If you have a six alternating cycle, any length of alternating cycle uh, will lead to uh, this. So we have to avoid that. Okay. So, you, 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 so to avoid this type of alternating cycles, what we consider some alternating path, say of, of, of or H2 or H2, uh, a num number of edges can be two or three. So let's consider the, uh, the alternative path. Actually, that actually simplifies the analysis. The analysis of the alternating cycles are a bit more com cumbersome. So to avoid those, we actually consider uh, uh, the alternative path. Okay, so now we focus on the, the security of this mode. This is a unified mode. Uh, uh, we'll just briefly discuss what are the main bad events, and you will see the details in the papers. Okay, so, uh, we have uh, different sigma values and theta values if you've had different messages, okay? And we say that this sigma uh, tuple and theta tuple is covered if we have uh, uh, say alternating cycles of length two that we have to avoid for two different messages. So we have uh, collisions on the hash values, okay? Or alternating path of length three means we have a two edges, sigma i equal to sigma j and theta i equal to theta k. So that's the alternating path of length three. So it, 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 you can easily see that if, uh, if you do not have these two conditions, then there cannot be any alternating cycles because alternating cycle of length four or six or higher 
must contain AP3. Okay, so it's just uh, uh, to ease the analysis. If you, you may consider the uh, AC4 or maybe even higher to get a, possibly get a better bound. That uh, if you want to prove the better bound, probably you have to go uh, uh, for that. But for if you restrict, if you restrict your bat even like this, then the analysis is much simpler, and you can actually uh, uh, get the same bound as uh, the uh, the designers proved originally. Okay, so uh, so we already just seen that uh, alternating cycle makes the sum to, to be zero, so we should avoid it. So the one bad event is definitely the alternating cycle two, as I mentioned. <laughs> the another bad event is the AP3. Okay, so so these are the, the different bad events which appear in the proof. Okay, and that actually avoids all alternating cycles. These two avoid all alternating cycles. But there will be some more bad events when you prove uh, this, uh, when you go for that, uh, the, the com complete proof details, you will have some more bad events. So why those bad, the other bad events are coming? Let's see, it's like uh, what we do in the ideal world, in the ideal world we sample the TI values randomly. So all the TI values, this is the tag, we sample randomly. And then we uh, sample the hash key, and we see, observe the different sigma and thetas based on the hash key and the, all the queries uh, are done. So we have a different sigma and theta values, and we have a ti values. Suppose we have, a, a, say, sigma equal to sigma j for some, uh, for two queries, okay? So what we will do is sample one of these. Say, suppose we sample sigma j hat, then we have to give the same sigma j hat here. So sigma i hat should be sigma j hat because the input is polite here. But once you fix sigma j hat to be here, then the theta i hat, theta i hat, which should be ti plus sigma i hat. So this value is kind of fixed. Is you cannot, uh, you cannot, uh, uh, some, you cannot have. There is no randomness once you have a, once you fix the, all the t values and the sigma hat. And this can happen. Uh, this can collide for the previous uh, some another theta k hat values. So this theta i hat which is you assigned because of uh, you are trying to uh, make it compatible with the, your previously sampled t values, and which can collide with the already sampled theta values. And that can be a problem, because theta i may not be equal to theta k, and you got a collision on the range, but uh, there is no collision on the domain. So that's called the range collision, so you, have, you got a range collision. So previously, like all these uh, previous collisions was like a domain collisions, like AC2 or AP3, but now you have some kind of range collision because this is a block cipher, so you have to avoid both range and domain collision. So this is range collision one, and similarly you have a range collision two, it's just uh, the opposite, like instead of uh, 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 getting a collision on the theta height, now we've got a collision on the sigma i hat. So, so, so we, uh, we've got a similar uh, Okay, so we define the bad, uh, we say that the bad event means all these collisions, range collisions, and, and the previous, that AP3 and AC2. And then you can bound uh, the range collisions, like uh, there are three possible uh, tuple, uh, I, J, K, which can, uh, we can choose in the Hue cube OS, Q choose three OS in, more particularly. And the probability for this, like a range collision, you get a two power N. And there will be one more collisions because of the, uh, you, have to, uh, you, you do this, Range collision, once you have a sigma equal to sigma j or theta equal to theta j. So once you have a collision here, that, that is the collision probability of the hash functions. We call it universal hash function advantage. And we have a, uh, due to randomness of the t, we have another collision, the theta, that cost uh, 2 power minus n here. So you actually get 2 power 2n if you assume that universal hash advantage is 2 power minus uh, n. So you get a qq or 2 power 2n bound here. And we have the, free, uh, the other bounds, like uh, uh, this is the AC2, alternating cycle of length two. This is actually the collision of the hash function uh, output, both all uh, two n bit output. So you expect to put two n, one over two put two n here. And this is the cover free advantage, which is like uh, AP3. So here, because of the uh, uh, possibly independent of the hash outputs or using the dedicated uh, constructions, you can get a one over two put two n bound here. So in total, you actually get uh, uh, 2 n, QQ or 2 power 2 n bound. But it's still not done. We have to do some more good transcript analysis. And for that, we use the sum of permutation results by looks in UQ 2000. OK, so what we get at the end, we get that uh, the PRF advantage is uh, uh, consists of the, these four terms. So one is the cover-free terms, 
One is the AC2 terms. Another is this is uh, due to uh, range, due to range collision, and this is due to the good transcript analysis. You have to consider sum of permutation. You get this term due to good uh, good transcript analysis. So uh, this is the bound. You can get the details uh, of uh, how actually these bounds are coming, and we apply the H technique proof. Uh, you can get the, all the details in the proof in the paper. Okay, so now I uh, move to two key constructions. The two key construction is uh, similar to the three key construction, but you have now same key. So the problem here, uh, uh, in this case, you have to have a more bad events. Like you previously you are considering sigma equal to sigma j or theta equal to theta k, but now you have to, now you have to consider cross collisions like sigma equal to theta k or theta equal to sigma j. So these, these cross collisions are coming and that makes the analysis much more cumbersome. So what we did, we, uh, we apply some fixed zero and fixed one. So this means we uh, fix one bit to zero of the hash output and fix one means we fix, say, last bit to one. So that means I never get a collision between sigma and uh, between one sigma value with another theta values because the last bit is fixed. So that actually is a trick to avoid the unnecessary extra bad events which can arise for the two-key analysis. Okay, so uh, so this is this actually gives us two-key two-key analysis. Uh, two-key has then uh, uh, some analysis, but here you have to be careful because the, we we have a universal advantage as well as the collision uh, advantage for the hash functions but the hash function is no longer this hash function should be after fixed zero and fixed one okay so so uh, the overhead actually comes into the analysis of the hash function but still it's better because you only consider a pair of message or a, uh, three messages and you consider some collision event on sigma and theta okay so uh, in that case we get a similar results for the two key constructions with fixed zero and fixed one, we get uh, similar terms. Okay, we get some extra term, q over two power n, and these terms, again, due to uh, the sum of permutation results, but now it's not for sum of permutations with the same, uh, two independent keys, but sum of permutations with the same keys. So, so there are some uh, variants of the pattern results also, so where you can apply that and you get a different factors, like six q over two power two n, and using that, you, uh, we get a two key analysis. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's see some instantiation and what, uh, what happens our bound yeah, if we apply uh, this analysis. So we already have a sum ACBC, PMAC plus, 3KF9, LightMAC plus, so all these are three kit. So these are the old bound. And we, if you see, apply the new, if you, get, if you see the new bounds, and so we actually get uh, some improved bound. For example, sum ACBC, uh, we don't have L factor here, actually. So, but we have a QL square, which, uh, which is uh, in terms, if you just square it, you get a Q square L4 over 2 power 2 n, in, and you have a Q cube L4 2 power 2 n. So in some sense, it's, it's a better bound than this, in some sense. This is more or less, uh, even this is better also. So we don't have a L cube factor here. So we mostly gain in terms of the L factors. So we have a PMAC plus bound, which is improved. Uh, the 3KF9, which is, uh, which is not correct, as I mentioned, there should be L4. So I found uh, very difficult to avoid the birth uh, bound of L. So in the sequential constructions, the birth bound of L is, is becomes uh, unavoidable. So this is not correct. So what, we, what the bound we got is Q cube L4, what to put away. And light map plus, okay, mm -hmm. this is already uh, tight, so there's nothing to uh, improve. But at, at the same time, we actually have uh, two key versions of all these constructions with a similar bound. So the previous, all these constructions are three keys, or maybe four keys, but now you have uh, two key versions of all these constructions, and you get a similar bound. So this means you save keys, okay? You get a better bounds. Uh, so this is the advantage of, if, uh, sometimes uh, you get advantage if you unify uh, the designs, if you have a better understanding of the designs, so you have a better analysis uh, on, the, on, the, on those designs, and you get a better bound. So we have shown the security of all this construction up to 2 power 2 n by 3. As I mentioned, like, uh, we consider the two bad events, uh, like a, a path of length 3 with the two edges. So one may actually go uh, for the uh, 3 AP4. 
So one can hope for uh, better security, and that's what I, uh, we believe. In fact, there are attacks known in last crypto. To, uh, we uh, learned it all have shown that uh, all these constructions are, uh, can be attacked into power 3n by query, com 3n by 4 query complexity. So the 2 power 3n by 4 is the upper bound on the number of queries. You cannot go better than that. And we already have a lower bound on the number of queries, 2 power 2n by 3. So there is still a gap, which is an open problem. And we believe that uh, the gap uh, can be pushed further to 2 power 3n by 4. Uh, if you consider possibly the AP4 and some other uh, bad events might be. So we have not done this, those analyses because it looks more cumbersome. Already we have a several bad events, so, so we avoid those bad events. But we hope that this can be made tight uh, to 2 by 3 and by 4. Thank you for it. Questions for Maidur? Yeah, so we have a brief question. Could you go back one slide? Um, yeah, sure. So for tricky F9, um, so you said that you have Q cube L to the four and they have Q cube L to the third, and that's why their result is incorrect. But could it just as well be that your bound is slightly worse, or is it, is it really a mistake in the proof of tricky F9? Yeah, so this is, this is the proof. Is, uh, uh, proof has flaw. So, ah, okay. So if, yes. you, if, you, if you collect the proof, their proof, you will get uh, this bound. But you found a mistake in the proof? Yeah. Ah, okay, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Other questions? Well, if not, let us thank Redul again. <laughs> and the last talk 